Hello friends, in this video I'm going to be looking at some advanced reading techniques in Emacs following up on the previous basic reading video that you should see in the playlist. As before, all of the things I'm going to show you may seem fast in the video, so if, if you want to learn more, please follow the link to the blog below where I give the code and the shortcuts I use as well as explicit explanation. Now today we're talking about advanced reading and the first thing I'm going to show you is something I forgot actually and omitted from the last short video. If you're reading a, a large document, of course you want the ability to stop somewhere and pick up where you left off. In other words, you want bookmarks. So we're in a huge document right here. Suppose we're reading from uh, let's say Moses 7 right here. We finish our reading. All you do, and this is out of the box functionality, is save yourself a bookmark. So let's say uh, video Moses. Okay. Then you can be anywhere else in the same buffer or in another buffer. And you can then quickly, as you would expect, hop back to where you were at. And then, if you continue reading, now you're somewhere new, you simply overwrite the previous one. You should probably name it something less specific than referring to the chapter itself. And then, as you would expect, it'll hop you right back to where you were to the same cursor position. This is basic bookmark functionality. If you're interested in more bookmark functionality, there's a great package called Bookmarks Plus, which allows you to work with bookmarks on the way that you do with Firefox or Chrome, where you can tag bookmarks, you can sort them, you can bookmark whole directories, manage projects that way, and work with bookmarks on the scale of hundreds or thousands of bookmarks. But if you're doing basic reading, then the functionality I've just shown you works in any Emacs buffer, and you can use it to easily get around and, and view things. Bookmarks Plus, I should mention, gives you extra options for bookmarking non-Emacs files. So for instance, PDF files, web pages, or even special views. So if you're serious about bookmarks, look into Bookmark Plus. Next, I'm going to show you view mode. So right now, to get around, I have to hold down Alt for V, or Control for V to go down a page, or Control with something to go up or down lines. View mode facilitates all that by allowing you to more quickly and more easily navigate through documents. So I'm actually in view mode right now. I use it so often that I've made it synonymous with read-only documents. So read-only documents automatically open in view mode for me. And I have a shortcut key to toggle this on and off. I've also included in this particular file, you can see this top line right here. This tells it to start this file in view mode every time I access this file. So this one that I plan on only reading and not editing very often. What view mode does is allow you with a single keystroke to do the things I was doing with multiple keys before. So just space is page down, just backspace is page up, just enter is line down. And moreover, I can do rapid incremental searching with just S to search forward, or just R to search backwards. And as you know, in Emacs, this kind of incremental search is the best way to get around. Even if it's already on the same screen, you don't need to move your hand to the mouse. You can easily just zoom to whatever text you want. So right there we go. So incremental searching is powerful and it's easier in view mode. Next up, I'm going to show you narrowing and widening. So this means that I'm able to constrain my view to just a narrow area of the buffer. So I'm in a huge buffer right now, but maybe I only want the New Testament. I've now narrowed it to the New Testament. Anything I do, whether it's a search, a replace, or anything else, will be constrained to this view. However, I've not changed the underlying content. This means that nothing's being overwritten. If I save the file, I don't delete everything I don't see right now. But if I do change the file, it is, a, it is an actual change to the view I'm in. View mode is really useful. Narrowing is really useful right here so that I can easily focus on a certain area or constrain my commands to a, to a certain area. So for instance, if I want to do a find and replace, I don't replace things in the other places I'm not looking, the Old Testament or the Book of Mormon, for instance. Only in the New Testament I'm constrained to, I can further narrow to just one such book, for instance and then with a quick keystroke I'm out. And these keystrokes are out of the box and so you don't need to set anything up. Control X N, N Control X N W both automatically manage your narrowing and widening. 
very useful. Related to this is the ability to do indirect buffers. So an indirect buffer is like splitting your screen, but whereas with splitting your screen, all your view settings are shared between both screens, with an indirect buffer, you're opening a copy that can have its own view settings. However, any changes you make to that will be reflected in both places. I'll show you how this works. I'm going to show you the org mode version because it just makes a few shortcuts that make it even easier. To do the same thing without org mode would be, would be possible, but not quite as convenient. So org mode allows me to select a narrow area, or not even select it, just be in an area. And then I'm going to do org, let's see. There we go, org tree to indirect buffer. And what that does is open a split you see below here where my cursor is. Now, it's only showing me Matthew. And you can see in the mode line, what it's actually done is a narrow, like I just showed you, but it's taken care of it all automatically to just show me the org section I'm in. Now, you can do this kind of thing anywhere. And the, and the effect here, although I can't change the theme since that's global, font size can be changed just like this. And any other view setting you have, if you do highlighting or anything else, then you can change it in one without changing the other. However, you'll notice that changes were reflected in both places. Another thing you'll notice is that I changed the view mode so that I can edit the bottom one, but it's not allowing me to edit the top one because that original buffer is still in view mode. So you can have different modes in indirect buffers. And this is a very useful little technique. Then you can just kill the indirect buffer as you'd kill any buffer, and any saves, any edits are still reflected in the original, but you haven't lost anything. That's indirect buffers, which can be very useful, especially for editing, but also for some, some reading techniques here. Next up, I'll show you split screens. So vertical split screens have some obvious benefits for side-by-side -side comparison. To do that, I'm going to look for an Isaiah chapter of, okay, of, second, of, of Nephi in the Book of Mormon, and then we can do a side-by-side -side comparison by doing a vertical split we're going to go to Isaiah 48. All right. And now you can easily see how you could do a side-by-side -side comparison to see how the text stack up. And this is something that I find very useful for this kind of a study. Now, horizontal splits work in a similar way, and you could do something similar to side-by-side -side comparison, I guess, but what I usually use them for is place keeping. So in this case, suppose that I don't actually want to do a side-by-side -side comparison, but let's say um, I see Nephi quotes Isaiah as using the term uh, sinew, and I want to find another place, then I can do a search in the other section of the same buffer which is a little easier and faster than using an indirect buffer. And maybe I see something I like, I, I find what I'm looking for, and then I want to go right back to where I was. I don't want to lose my spot. I just close the new buffer and it resumes where my cursor is at in the original. This is how I most often use horizontal splitting to keep my thumb in the section I was at. So that's a useful little trick. And again, I'm not using any custom key commands for these splitting commands. These are all out of the box and pretty simple. So together, I've shown you some of my advanced reading techniques, and I hope that you find these useful. I'd love any comments in the YouTube or blog listings below, and would direct you to the linked blog post to have any, so that you can have any uh, instructions on the commands or the code used. Thanks. Have a good day.